that you've enjoyed the lab. Um, oh dear, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Would you mind trying to repeat that one more time and then otherwise I'll just respond with, with what I do here. Oh, hey, Hannah, sorry, that was a technical problem from my side. So I'll leave it for you now. You can start. Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, oh, awesome, the chat. Great, I love the chat. Um, I would like you guys to do something for me. Um, if you can hear me and you understand what I'm saying and you um, get the slide, you're ready to move on, just throw some plus signs in the chat. And if you have questions or can't hear what I'm saying, can you put minus signs in the chat for me? Go ahead and throw plus signs if, if you agree. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I'm going to try just a little bit of an introduction of myself in Arabic because I love to speak Arabic and I am always coding and never get a chance to. <laughs> but Anna is me, Hana. Oh, wait, wait, Anna, can you just wait? Because yeah. there's an yeah. interpreter who is interpreting you. So I'm just going to stop the interpreting for a few minutes for you to introduce yourself in Arabic. Other, otherwise, people are going to hear the interpreter. Um, closing <laughs> for you to speak and then restarting again. Okay. You can go. Okay. Anna is me, Hana. I'm a software engineer um, in San Francisco, California. I'm um, a man and I'm to hackathon, but I'm um, to Katira, and I'm a Kuntu Taliba. Hello, Anna Bishogol, and I'm a Kuntu Taliba. Hello, Anna Bishogol, and I'm a Kuntu Taliba. Hello, Anna but hayati prototyping rapidly. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm restarting the interpretation now uh, for people to like to hear the webinar in, in Arabic. But that was okay. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, hackathon prototyping for the win or um, different strategies for quickly building an impressive project. Next slide. Um, so the table of contents is um, kind of big and hopefully we'll, we'll take the time we need to discuss things as we go um, and hopefully we'll have the time to, to get what we need in. Um, so really, everything that I talk about <laughs> is going to be about prioritization and focus and strategies to do that in particular um, in hackathons um, or just time crunched situations. Um, the rapid prototyping cycle will go through um, pretty detailed and all of these methodologies are taken from Agile, which I think you guys do a bit of Agile and Scrum work um, through GSG anyway, so hopefully a lot will be familiar. Um, we'll talk through things. I'm going to ask for your participation um, as long as, as Zoom is, is supporting that for us um, with an idea called Grocery Heroes. Um, and then we'll just summarize it for you guys and, and send you back to work. <laughs> um, Goals of the planning stage are pretty straightforward. Um, Agile actually has a huge portion of um, software engineer project management work front loaded into planning. And the reason why is if you can get everybody on the same page, um, understanding what the, the actual goal is and um, what features are most important to everybody, then you can actually save a lot of time in, in having to iterate and, and fix things as you go. It'll also help you divvy tasks. And very importantly for a hackathon, it'll help you discern like if your group is falling behind and if you need to change your features so that you can actually end up with a complete project at the end. Um, everything about this is going to be uh, small and tight and iterative. 
Okay, can you guys give me plus signs if everybody already has an idea? Okay, so for the, um, oh, oh, many, many of you guys, you guys all have ideas. Plus and minus, maybe you're gonna refine them, got it. Um, so I won't spend too much time talking about this, but for those of you who want to enhance ideas or maybe don't have one or think you might pivot, um, you don't need an idea from scratch. You guys might already be aware of websites like this, but helpwithcovid.com and helpfulengineering.org have plenty of um, project pitches for technology that are already categorized and labeled. And a really great thing to do would be able to take one of these existing ideas um, and adapt it to the needs of your community um, or adapt it to the way it's going to speak to the hackathon judges. That is something that's very important for those of you guys who have ideas. It might be worth taking a look at your idea and thinking about um, the, yeah, I'll go back to that other slide. So thinking about the actual um, judges and what their experience is and what the actual criteria are and making sure that your idea is going to go for that. So you guys will have access to these slides and the links are actually on here. Um, so don't, don't worry too much about writing it down or memorizing. Um, so I'm just gonna move on and we're gonna talk about the example um for this slide so here is a tweet from a woman in the united states in san francisco actually um and she is saying that she went to the grocery store as she went to the grocery store she heard a woman yelling to her from the car the woman and her husband were in there very scared to go into the store they heard they would get sick um, more easily than other people and they don't have family around to help them out. That's a super common thing actually in the United States for elderly people. Um, so this woman actually, they had been waiting in the car to find somebody who looked trustworthy and they gave her their money and asked her to go buy them groceries and bring it back to the car, which she did. Um, there's a ton of apps and actually like uh, existing apps that have been refactored to address this need in the United States. Um, and as we talk through the idea, I want you guys to think about this very specific example. It gives us a lot of information. We even have this picture of this younger woman who's doing a volunteering work. Um, we know that the husband and wife are in their 80s. So we have a lot of information for a real idea. Oh, yeah, I'll sit down. Um, we have a lot of information for a real idea of real people who we can try to build a solution for. Okay, so one of the most important anchoring principles of um, rapid prototyping through the Agile methodology is thinking very deeply about who the hack is for. So we'll think about this elderly couple and we'll think about the woman who's helping them. They would be the people who would be using our technology solution. We want to even think about when and how and where they're going to use this product. We want to think about um, like unique needs of those people that might change the features that we should build. And in terms of building our hackathon project, one that's um, good and solid and judges will recognize as having market value, um, or significance or impact. Um, you really want to focus on, on building and demonstrating the parts of your hack where the user will spend the most time solving their problem, the problem that's related to the theme of the hack. Okay, so let's talk about our app that our imaginary team is building. Um, and it's called Grocery Heroes. Please don't spend a ton of time thinking about the name of your app or the logo. In real startups, you usually have a working title and a working logo and you fix those things once you have money. But the important thing is the functionality and the need. So um, jump right in into content. Um, the problem that we saw in that tweet is that there are individuals during this crisis who cannot go grocery shopping on their own. It's a very specific problem. And the solution 
is um, that we are going to do something with technology to help those individuals in need um, and match them with volunteer shoppers. So the main user we want to focus on is um, going to be our elderly client. Um, the woman who was tweeting was tweeting already, and she seemed very young. So we're going to kind of assume that the volunteer users are going to be young and capable of using technology. Maybe not that many unique needs, but the elderly users most certainly will. We'll have to think very carefully about if we could even introduce a technological solution into their lives that they would actually use and adopt. Um, so from there, we're just brainstorming. And maybe you guys have skimmed this already. I'll read the list. But if you see something that's missing or you think something, we could add it to um, our Grocery Heroes app, um, like another feature, please just type it in the chat and I'll read some of them out loud as we go. So the brainstorm is for features. And yeah, totally, please, please type them in the chat. One feature could be the user creation and that would be login, sign up, maybe answering questions. Um, another feature could be creating and editing and deleting help requests. Another could be finding and responding to help requests. Oh, should I go? Should I go? Oh, never mind. Malik's looking for the for the translation. Okay. Um, finding and responding to the help requests. Um, some people could build a chat app. We could build an integration for reimbursement. We could build something to incentivize people to participate, like the leaderboard for active volunteers. Um, so translations to different sorts of, of languages could be good. Um, all right. So. From here, we, um, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um, from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to um, think about um, what are the core features that we should be focusing on. Um, so to do this, we need to think about, is this feature impactful? Is it going to stand out from the other demonstrations and presentations and solutions? You should think about, um, for everything that you build, is it core to your solution and not just kind of framing and complementing what actually solves the problem? You should think about, um, is there an existing product that you can just integrate with? And lastly, of course, this is a hackathon, you're building things you should think about if you're excited to build it. So, um, Grocery Heroes, if we think backwards, um, I was saying like the problem is that people can't buy groceries and the solution in this case that we're using is that we are going to, um, we're gonna match them with volunteers. And when I think about even just saying that sentence, matching jumps out to me is the key thing that I said we're gonna do. And we're gonna imagine that our team is a technical team um, with a lot of technical experience and we wanna highlight that in our presentation. So we'll focus on the algorithmic matching of volunteers with help requests. So to just brainstorm some of that, maybe it's by geography or category, um, maybe it's through social networks. So you help people who you kind of feel like you at least know somebody who knows that they're trustworthy um, or you could do something that's time of day based. Um, so that's definitely important. And then another thing that I think is very important, just in terms of thinking about how I would demonstrate something, is uh, the user interactions. So we need to be able to display the help requests, um, maybe sort and search them, maybe think about the flow of how a user moves through responding to those requests. All right, so here comes the harder part, um, cutting things down. Because hackathons are so time condensed, you really need to focus on only building what's critical. So please do ask yourself for anything that you're building, is it critical to our idea? Can we argue for it not being critical? Is it 
required to frame or explain how our idea works, if we didn't include this feature in our demo, would the project demo still make sense? And you can also think about, will every team in the hackathon demo this feature? For example, I actually got to be there with you guys to, to judge a hackathon, and I watched so many people log in. And to be honest, the login didn't explain um, most of how the feature was working. And because you only have maybe a two minute, three minute presentation, don't take that time um, to demonstrate the login, jump straight into content. And if you're not gonna demo it, maybe don't even build that part. So um, I know that some people are building this project <laughs> and I wanna emphasize that this is, this is not like a right answer. Every team will have different reasons for building um, different features. And it could be, you know, for any number of reasons. Maybe you guys have a lot of experience building chat apps. Maybe you just really want to. Um, maybe your goal is thinking about user design. Maybe your goal is to win the hackathon. Maybe you, there's a lot of valid reasons to be in a hackathon. The main point is just to build something that you're enjoying building. Um, so for the purposes of just walking through something, um, we're going to say for, for our imaginary team's Grocery Heroes app, um, we're going to decide that we're going to cut these three things straight off the bat. Um, the chat app, the leaderboard, and the sign-in screens. And those are for a bit of different reasons. Um, the chat app we're cutting because we believe that, that um, it's kind of auxiliary. It actually, I think, could be a really useful tool to this project. Um, let's say you're a grocery shopper um, for somebody and you need to be able to like communicate a change or let them know that something isn't there. Um, chat could be useful, but there's other ways we could implement that. So you could actually just list a phone number and um, get the phone call and that's equally valid. Um, probably better for an elderly user, in fact, because they're more familiar with phone calls than applications. So that's off. The leaderboard feels very supporting and auxiliary. We're not even sure that we need it. So because it's so um, enhancing and not really about the core solution, leaderboard is gone. The sign-in screens are definitely part of what we would build if it were a complete app. But it doesn't have to be a complete app for a hackathon. It is just a demonstration of kind of um, snippets of what is a complete app. Um, the things that you're going to demo to prove out your idea. And because of that, we're taking away the sign-in screens. Um, I know that you're going to have to forgive me. Our little puppy is in our room. I'm going <laughs> to make my husband take it away. <laughs> uh, ben, can you please take Tina? <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, the leaderboard, what would the leaderboard have been for? The leaderboard would be about incentivizing people to participate. So let's say like you um, want to, you want to give points to volunteers um, for them to um, be participating more and rack up points. It's a little bit for this idea of gamifying or making it more satisfying for someone to participate in your app more often. But Boston, like I totally agree. What is that good for? You know, it's arguable. And because it's arguable, um, we're not sure. Um, Boston also put the, the rating is good to have. So yes, that's another, and it could be a simpler idea to introduce in a smaller way to the project. So when to mock or fake a feature. Mocking and faking functions, features, and even databases are fantastic ways of limiting the scope of your work without limiting the scope of your project. Um, this is maybe an unpopular idea for a lot of the people who are back-end engineers. I do full stack engineering, and so I understand the pain, but... <laughs> Um, there's a lot of advice out there from winning hackathon teams to not build a backend whatsoever, to simply focus on demonstrating the UX. Um, and maybe your team makes the decision to do that. Maybe your team decides, you know what, we are like predominantly backend engineers. We're gonna focus on a, a backend implementation. Both of those things are okay, I want to stress. Um, 
but just as you make your choices, understand what your your team is actually strong in, um, how you guys are uniquely building a solution, and really like present your strengths and focus on your strengths as you're choosing your features and crafting your presentation. Um, so diving back into this slide more more thoroughly, though, um, ask yourself. Will your project make sense if you had a fake implementation of this feature? Ask, is the implementation of this feature absolutely necessary to demonstrate that my project is feasible and solves the problem? And ask as well, will a fake implementation or fake data give the same functionality during the pitch? So, with Grocery Heroes, um, we're gonna explore some ideas. I'm gonna say that we're gonna fake all of our user data. Um, I let you guys know that we were just gonna cut out the user login screen. And so we need some way for that data to exist. And I'm gonna say that I am just gonna make a choice. Let's say that this is a, a Node React app, like a mean stack. Um, I'm just going to make the choice that we're going to cut out the back end and I'm going to program the user data in JavaScript in a function that will be called like call the fake back end API <laughs> and then I'll, I'll return just I'll go ahead and return um, the JavaScript objects of the mocked users. Um, a tip for this, if you do fake these kinds of interactions and asynchronous calls, loading GIFs and spinners really help give your app a feel of still being impressive and still connected. Um, okay, for those of you who think this is like a trick and it's cheap, um, please do remember that people have different goals for the hackathon. So maybe it's building out something technically sound and if you're doing that, show off that you built something technically sound. If your goal is to demonstrate that you have a well-planned technical feature, um, keep just just make sure that that idea is fully fleshed out. So Nisreen asked um, whether a profile is important. And again, I'm gonna say it's very dependent on what the goals are of your team and what features you think are important. For my example, my fake example, um, with my fake team that's making fake decisions um, to, to Abed, um, I would say that we're deciding that profiles um, are not very important. We will have a profile, but it will be faked. So the data will be hard coded. Please give me a, a minus, um, anybody, if you do not know what hard coded data is. Or, or what mocking a function would look like. Um, so help request creation um, is something we're also gonna fake in this case. It might seem severe because we're building, okay, minuses. Um, let me finish this list and, and I'll talk a little bit more about mocked data. Um, so help request creation, we're also gonna decide we're gonna do this mocking process too, um, which might feel severe because that's something that feels very core to our app, but we're, focusing on prioritization very hard. Um, and also we might possibly even mock the response creation. So what does it mean to mock or fake features? What I mean is to build static content instead of connected content that's connected to a server and then to a database and then passed backwards. So I mean, um, if you are, um, uh, yeah, I mean, don't actually process real data, just return results every time. So, I mean, um, I would write def get users, this is Python, sorry, sorry guys, maybe I should have done this in JavaScript, and then I would write return an array, and then I would return uh, an array, I'm kind of mixing languages, but I'm returning array of dictionaries. And so if I were to do that, then each of these objects that you guys see, objects or dictionaries of users, each of those would have the content inside. Um, hop on the chat if you're not on the chat and you gave me minuses, and go ahead and look at um, that return. 
Um, so we have a great question um, that I'm not going to address at this moment because we're going to address in like maybe the very next slide. <laughs> yeah. So when should you lean on existing implementations or what about using open source ready solutions and, and um, just customizing those for prototypes? Yes, 100% yes. So that's how you win a hackathon. <laughs> um, what you guys really need to be focusing on is building out um, the core features that are the pieces of the unique solution to your app. Um, I would highly recommend using um, presets and boilerplate and, and open source ready solutions um, whenever you can. So literally ask yourself, is there an existing implementation of this desired feature? If there is, there's a few criteria that you should use before you just adopt it. Um, but if there is one, you want as much as possible to just go ahead and use that piece. Um, so the to vet or decide whether or not you should or shouldn't use something, um, you should ask yourself, is it well-maintained, stable, and easy to integrate with? And you should also ask yourself, is it written in your language and your tool ecosystem? If you're uncomfortable with the idea of, of um, using somebody else's implementation, then don't do it. Um, it's, it's really about what, what makes your team feel comfortable, and you're going to do well the things that you're comfortable doing. Um, but if you're excited about it, then integrations can save you time and allow you to quickly increase the impact of your project. Um, so again, I'm going to give you guys these slides. Please don't feel like you have to memorize or write things down. But here's an example of a website that literally just has um, a bunch of preset hackathon projects um, that are ready to go. You just plug and play. They're written for almost any stack that you want to use. They are, are written um, even just like a different kind of user flow. So maybe there's already a shop looking ones and there's already checklist looking ones. Um, links to two uh, good sources that I know of are here after this boilerplate, so Product Hunt and Hackoos. If you do use this, remember the point is to build something. So the point isn't just to make somebody else's code work, but to enhance it and make it better. Um, please don't hide the fact that you've used a boilerplate, but highlight the ways in your demonstration that you've enhanced it. Um, another one, I think a lot of you guys uh, use React and React Native. There's Create React App, um, which would feel pretty familiar. I also recommend doing this in terms of components. Material UI is, I think it's a Google-supported UX library, um, which allows you to add like a navigation without having to make one or tabs without having to make them yourself. Anything that is opinionated and default and boilerplate can save your team time. <laughs> Um, if you don't want to use something that's pre-existing and, and part of what you want to do is build something from scratch, then you still might want to think about opinionated tools. For example, if you're using Python, Django is more opinionated than Flask. If you're using JavaScript, Meteor is more opinionated than Angular or React. Um, again, prefer tools that you're comfortable with. You don't want to spend a lot of time doing setup and bug fixing and not understanding the ecosystem. You want to spend your time generating content. So if, you, if this is all feeling weird to you, um, ignore these slides and build as you would have anyway. That is OK. It's great, and it can be a lot of fun. Um, but um, not everybody wants to spend this time approaching new things because it can slow you down in building a project. Personally speaking, I love trying to do something brand new <laughs> when in a hackathon because you can't do it in your job, really, is, is kind of why. It's this chance to build new things and use technologies. For me, it's very exciting and at least half of the fun of the hackathon. Um, but if you do decide to use a tool that people in your team don't yet know, firstly, limit the amount of tools that you guys don't already know how to use ideally to like just one big one or like ugh, maybe three small ones <laughs> but you should mostly use things that you already know in order to successfully complete your project if you're unsure if an idea is feasible and you or like integration is feasible have fun and validate it with code but do like create a time limit and only explore for that amount of time. So for me, if I'm looking at a new library, um, 
again, my life is rapid prototyping. I don't have a lot of time between um, communication with stakeholders and then actually needing to deliver that. Um, my development cycle is somewhere around a week. So if I'm gonna implement drag and drop image uploading, I'll probably only give myself about 20 minutes to explore a new tool. And if I like it, I'll keep going um, and I'll decide to use it, but only if I haven't really encountered errors, only if it doesn't feel confusing. And if it feels confusing or I can't really get it to integrate with my existing project, then I look for a different library. If I can't find a library that works with that, I find a new simpler way to implement that thing, which doesn't require um, adding a new tool. Definitely set a time box. Give yourself exploration time of maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes or less and stick to it. Um, you guys don't have a lot of time, so use this time wisely and choose your new tools wisely. While we're talking about new tools and after I told you to not use them, I'm still gonna try to get you to use them. Um, APIs um, or different kinds of fun library or native or visualization tools um, are really wonderful ways to make your project stand out from everybody else's. So I pulled some ideas for APIs that I think might be applicable um, to this hack. So geolocation might be something, um, health data, chat, um, 3D printing, wearables. And then I've added this just generic APIs for hackathons link. Um, and it just has, you know, tons of categories. It's a marketplace of open source integrations that you can consider um, that somebody has used specifically for hackathons and loved. Um, people have different skill levels and different experience backgrounds, so not all of these tools are going to be great for everybody, but, you know, they'll be a fun thing to consider. Um, I also think uh, libraries like Airflow and Cron or um, visualization tools like D3JS do a, a fantastic job of, of adding a little pizzazz to your project. I would be interested to know how pizzazz is translated in Arabic. <laughs> um, okay, so Brochure Heroes, um, some of the potential integrations that we could brainstorm are thinking if we did want to emphasize um, user login, we wouldn't build our own from scratch. We'd use something like Okta or Auth0. Reimbursements, um, so remember how the old woman held out money um, and the person went into the store. Well, like that's not that simple in most scenarios. And in a plague, um, we don't actually want to exchange physical money. So reimbursements might actually be a really strong argument. Um, so PayPal or React Stripe would save us um, a lot of boilerplate if we were to integrate. Um, vocal transcription might be something that's cool. You have this, this picture of this man here. I kind of imagine my grandmother using a phone. She does not want to um, type. She doesn't want to read. Um, if she could just talk her grocery list into the phone, it would be a lot better for her. Um, and similarly, we might want to think about accessibility features. Maybe some of the people in this age group are blind. Um, so screen readers would really help them um, you know, a screen reader is something that views the written content in your HTML and, and, and speaks it out loud. Um, so that could be something cool to focus on. Just a recap, your time is limited. So even though I really want you to use these integrations, only do it um, if they're, you know, ones you feel comfortable using, ideally ones you already know prefer well-supported tools, prefer widely adopted tools, prefer well-liked tools, and prefer well-documented tools. Um, I told you the exact criteria that match each of these things. For instance, well-liked tools correspond to stars on GitHub. That may or may not be clear to you, so I went and made a video of myself actually finding this drag and drop image upload that I'm doing for my own life, um, and you can watch that uh, if you're interested once you have these slides. Okay, back to the, kind of the planning, always, always back to the planning and prioritization. Um, when we think about our Grocery Heroes app, we want to think about, okay, there's things that we liked but aren't part of the core features that we talked about. And I like the idea of an integration with the map API so people who are nearby can help people who are nearby. I really like the idea of integration with the payments API. And I really like the idea 
um, somebody brought it up earlier, like this, this idea of, of maybe like ratings, just some way for people to know whether um, the person on the other end, the volunteer is really trustworthy um, to, you know, have their groceries and their home address. Um, but, oh, sorry, but I'm assigning those things as stretch goals. My team may or may not get them done um, because we're going to focus on those core features, which, again, are about the matching algorithm and about the display of user interactions um, with these requests. Okay, so now that we have really thought critically about each feature that we may or may not build, we're going to do a sketch to get everybody on the same page. Um, I've seen you guys do um, Crazy 8 design sprints before, and I would recommend something like maybe simpler. <laughs> you guys can see my awful drawing here. Um, this is actually um, a drawing of the Crazy 8's page. Um, not Crazy 8's page. Well, it is. So it's Crazy 8's, but cut down by two screens because for a hackathon, I think six main features is plenty to implement. Um, and this sketch to the left is of Grocery Heroes. And um, the six screens to the right are showing you, look, this can be incredibly simple. Um, maybe you're just showing these buttons. The point of this part of planning is just to get your team exactly on the same page, knowing um, what's going to be built where. Um, so these are very simple. Like this would be the extent of the wireframes for me, for a technical team. If you guys are exclusively a UX team, then you know treat this wireframing part, um, like within Vision or whatever, as your build step. Um, but I still recommend using a lot of preset tools. And here's a lot of design patterns, so you guys don't have to design things from scratch. The material UI is very it's code, but the rest of these um, are templates and, and a bit of CSS and HTML. Please do take preset materials as much as you can. Um, it is important to spend time on a good looking project to make it seem impressive, but please don't let that time be yours. Use somebody else's pre built patterns. Unless, again, you're a UX and design team, in which case that's your work. Um, so for the priority piece, um, once we're actually going to, now we need to rank them and we need to assign time to them in order to make sure we can deliver all of this um, as like a completed project at the end. Um, so by now, once we're thinking about timing, we already have a user validated idea. We've already focused on core and critical features and we've already kind of made initial selections of what tools and frameworks our team is going to use time to rank each feature in order of importance. When you do this, you might want to consider a little bit like this needs to happen in order for this thing to happen and kind of the order that things need to occur. But also remember that you can mock any piece of that. Um, so you need to distinguish between core versus secondary again and maintain those distinctions and you need to create stretch goals out of the features if your team spends too much time deciding if a feature should be on the list of what is critical and what is not. Um, it's worth as you're doing this prioritization thing thinking about the architecture of what you're going to build. Again, um, maybe your team decides that you're going to cut out this data layer and also that REST API and only build the view and controller pieces, um, that's fine. If you guys really want to build your full stack project, that's great too. But do think about, you know, um, if you're building full stack, especially, you need to be able to have all of these pieces play and be a part of, of the time boxing that you're about to do. So with Grocery Heroes, um, we're this in this version we're going to talk about we are not going to have a back end um and the ranking that we're going to do is number one the first thing that we're going to build is user interactions with help requests it's going to be a screen that looks roughly like this um this is not actually grocery heroes but it's enough for my team to be on the same page to know what we're building there's going to be a display of the message board 
Um, we're going to be able to view individual requests and we are going to mock responses to claiming a request. And the second thing we'll build is our matching algorithm. Um, we're going to use hard coded IP addresses to determine locations. We're going to hard code time availability of when people can um, actually like go out and get groceries and when people can receive groceries on the other end. Um, we are, are going to number three, um, create just mocked help requests. So we'll create like a hard coded form that doesn't actually really submit anywhere. The only thing is, is when we press the submit button, it will route us to this main main page. So it will, it will be like a mock or a fake of a, a working create help requests form that is sufficient for our presentation. Um, and we are going to mock um, reimbursing the shopper as you know what we want to do but our stretch is to actually do that integration and two more stretch goals will be that map integration of, of actually mapping out where people are and um, a map of where these help requests exist once we have that we can really think about our time during the hackathon as this waterfall so these things will happen and these things will happen then these things will happen then these things will happen and that grouping of colors that you see those phases um we're thinking of in terms of milestones so this this waterfall model for software engineering is very generic it's it's not tailored for hackathons um you guys will have to cut down research and discovery and design and really most of it's going to be about um this is a combination in the development phase. There won't be a lot of testing, but hopefully you're revi doing a lot of revising as you go. And the deployment phase for you is really the presentation. Um, at the end of each one of these phases, you guys should have something that you could present. Um, so when we think about those phases, um, we talk about them in Agile as milestones. So milestones for now, you can think about as a goal and a deadline. Um, milestones are finished when the set of features involved in the milestone are incorporated uh, or like shipped or deployed or in the master branch of the code base, however you guys are doing it. Um, somebody who didn't build that feature has to have used it successfully. So I wouldn't recommend actually probably doing automated tests or very much of that, but please do have um, somebody else take a look at that and um, your final criteria for this is a milestone results in working software that is enhanced and better than it was before um, so we have a question in our group chat um, we're building an app for the health sector is the patient profile important or not um, yeah, so I'm actually not going to fully answer that question for you. Um, it really depends on what your app for the health sector is. So you should think about, again, like, what problem am I solving? How much time is the user going to be spending um, on this feature in order to solve their problem? Um, and maybe you need to the answer to that is like, no, it's not that essential to solving the problem. The user will barely spend any time. Maybe they'll use it the first time and, and not later. But maybe you still do, do feel it's important to show the kind of information that you're acting um, upon throughout the rest of the app. So if that's the case, you might decide to build the patient profile. If you do, maybe the patient profile doesn't actually have to function. Maybe you can fake it. Maybe you can make static HTML. Maybe um, that's something your group feels strongly is really important to build. So it's it's truly up to you. Um, I want to walk you guys through a version of milestones and planning and prioritization with a backend because I would probably build a backend if I were hacking, <laughs> just because I'm stubborn. Um, so in that case, you really need to think about um, all of these. Uh, different kinds of components that you can build um, maybe in parallel or maybe can be pushed later. So the UX is still the most important. You can demonstrate something if you have UX, even if you don't have functioning um, database yet. 
So prioritize um, the UX for the most important features. Again, those are going to be um, the message board. Um, because we are in this version using a database, what we can do is going to be limited because we have less time to do all of these different things. And a lot of our time is now going to um, building that server, building that database and integrating all of these things. Because we're caring about making it functional, this team is going to actually prioritize creating requests, um, being interactive, and, and actually you can use it and delete it, and it really truly works. Um, because we've spent time here, we'll make sure that we demonstrate that we've built it correctly. Um, Right, and so then the message board component stays the same. We'll actually demonstrate um, the respond to requests, again, first building the UX and then coming back to it. Um, for us, step four is going to be that client-server communication level. Step five is going to be the CRUD interactions. Um, so creating, um, well, actually, you guys already know CRUD. Um, so six, um, searching and matching algorithm. We still really want to get to, but we need this other piece to be functional before we can even get to it. Um, and we're going to do a stretch goal of reimbursing because it still feels really, really important to do. So you can see how if we're planning the time that it takes to do all this, there's less that we can achieve if, than if we were going to fake the database. That said, if you guys want to build a full stack app, I still feel <laughs> like I would do it if it were my team. Um, so maybe you just have to push harder <laughs> and move faster, or maybe you do a good job of, of showing off um, in your presentation how you've made those pieces fully functional. Um, when you are planning these, like how did I come up with those six and not more? I broke down my tasks completely. So I thought about mocking data sources, and I'm literally thinking, okay, if I have users, um, and I need to mock that data, it's still going to take me time to mock the data, even if it's less than building out a database. So um, what I think it's going to take me, I actually like go back and look at the white team. What are we using um, users for? And what information about users do we need? So I'll go through and I'll actually think, okay, from the wireframes, the users had a profile picture, they had a name, they had a location, and they had time. Um, when they could have things delivered. And I will need to still design like a fake database schema, and I'll need to create a series of objects with um, users who actually have all of those attributes. So let's say that that takes me um, 10 minutes to do, but then I need to collaborate with my team to make sure that that's what we all agree should happen. That's another 10 minutes. Then I need to create that function that um, returns those things as a list of objects or an array of objects, that's going to be another 10 minutes. And then I need to integrate that function with the existing code, which I'm going to actually give maybe like an hour, because I think there will probably be a lot of back and forth between me and the other team member about what they want and how it's going to work. And then we have to agree, and then somebody needs to test it, and then we need to get it into the code base. So that's about like an hour and a half maybe already for mock to data sources. That might sound like a lot of time, but it's always better to like over budget your time and then find that you have more time later than to under budget your time and find that your team can't get done. So at the end, like I'm not necessarily suggesting that you build out something this this clear, but you guys should have um, an idea of like what you're building in what stage when it needs to be done and who's building it. So ideally all of this planning is getting you to this point so that you can like really understand, okay, like what is my team building? Can it be done by the end of this deadline? And if not, right now in planning, we need to cut and pivot and decide to mock something or decide to hard code something um, because we still want to get to this end result. So what can we change in our planning process to get us there? So even in this planning stage, you're, you're going to kind of use this cycle as well, where you're going to say, here's what we want to build. Here's the solution. Here is um, our plan to get there. Here's the timelines. And oh, we can't get done. So you're going to go back and, and iterate through that process until you have something that can get done. And everybody agrees it's going to be exciting to build and impressive for the judges. 
if your solution, um, the most important feature has minimal UI UX and relies heavily on the backend stuff. Um, yeah, so take take the portions of this talk where I was talking about building heavily on the back end and definitely stick to those, but also think about how you can visually display for the judges and make it exciting for the judges your heavy back end integrations. So you could think about um, you know, if we wanted to do data processing or like or, or talk about like massive amounts of users and how are we gonna match all of those people together, the algorithm comes pretty back end heavy. Um, I'm anticipating that judges, you're going to have a mix of technical and non-technical judges. Um, probably you'll have judges who have investor backgrounds, and if their background is in investing and, and pitching, then they're not really going to be able to easily um, understand that, that back-end stuff, and they're certainly not going to just understand it happens by seeing your minimal UI. That doesn't mean it's a bad idea for your project. It means you need to spend more time on your project thinking about how you're going to demo that backend stuff. People love visualization tools. People love looking at a terminal. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it feels kind of simple, but they, they kind of do. Um, so just if you're doing heavy backend stuff, remember that the goal is to visualize this for other people. Um, to stay on track, you guys need to do stand-up meetings. I think you guys already practiced those. Maybe in this case, um, if you guys are working remotely, especially, you're just on a Slack channel, but it's very worth checking in to make sure you're on track, um, the deadlines are passed, and you're still following through to get all of these features done in the time that you initially planned that they'd be done. Um, after each milestone is complete, you guys need to do a more thorough review. Do you still agree that the same features are essential? If you're running behind, um, you should assign work to a different team member who's more experienced with those tools to make up the time. Or if you don't have somebody like that, you should cut or mock that feature. If you're nearing in the end and running low on time, that's the same process. If you're ahead of schedule, think about what stretch goals that you set you could actually fit into the project, or if there are better stretch goals your team can think of. Um, and at all stages, just think, what can we do to add impact to our project in the eyes of the judges? So that's it. I mean, the whole presentation is really coming to well-planned priorities and team focus are as critical to hackathon success as a good idea. Um, and they're as critical to have fun success as like having actual experience in technology and code. Um, please never forget your real user. Make your project impactful to somebody real. Um, evaluate your choices based on team abilities. Fake or mock anything that's not critical. And again, that's different for every team. If you have a backend heavy solution, maybe you're faking or mocking more UI stuff, but just make sure that you are really only building out the core and critical features. Um, iteratively reevaluate, but most importantly, just build something. That's all. <laughs> Any questions from you guys? Any other questions? Thank you guys. It's always exciting to get to work with Gaza Sky Geeks. So, seems like we have no more questions. Uh, thank you so much, Hannah, for this webinar. This was very um, interesting and useful for everyone here. Great. I'm so glad. I am going to paste the link right now of this presentation into the chat. Um, anyone with that link should be able to view it. And again, um, a lot of those yellow titles and words are linked. So if you want to check out any of the links, just go for it. Awesome. Uh, so probably people are not going to be able to open the link from this chat. So if you send it to me, I'll make sure that we're going to share it um, on the Slack workplace where everyone can access it. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah. We're always happy to have you here.
Yeah, it's always good being here. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Good. Goodbye, everyone. This is the end of day two. We wish you all the best with all the hacking. Um, and see you soon. Bye-bye.